Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss me? The Angry Princess. Dana Newman was blessed with the natural looks of a goddess, but cursed with an inability to recognize it. Her vanity and insecurity was only fueled by a string of abusive boyfriends. By the time of her twenties, depression had dragged Dana into a downward spiral of self-loathing that doctors struggled to save her from. Her desperate search for perfection led to employment with a plastic surgeon, where her wage was paid in nose jobs, breast implants, and an endless array of other needless procedures. Alone in the office one night, Dana tried to perform surgery on herself in a desperate attempt to remove an unperceivable imperfection on her face. The unorthodox procedure went horribly wrong, and she was left blinded in one eye. She finally gave up on achieving perfection and mutilated herself in a bathtub until her veins ran dry. When they found her, they said that she was as beautiful in death as she was in life. What's up, Dems? It's your girl, Tucky, and I'm back with another i am so glad that you guys are here if you've made it this far thank you so much for continuing to watch this video and just continuing to support me and everything that i do let's just jump into why i did this video first of all let me just say that just like Dana Newman, I was very insecure. I was bullied. I was picked on. Um, I was, um, you know, touched at a young age. You know, I seen a lot of things. And so it made me very insecure. I didn't like how I looked. I had low self-esteem. You know, it really, really bothered me. That just turned into me just having insecurities within myself you know people told me I was pretty I was always head on by guys in private you know so it made me it made me feel like I was never enough and in turn it made me want to change how I look you know, maybe if I changed what I look like, people would like me or guys would find me more attractive than just, you know, behind a closed door. And so that is what started my journey into makeup. I thought, hey, like I'm always getting compliments about my lips. <laughs> Not that I'm smiling. That's so funny. Um, I'm always getting compliments about my lips, you know, so it started with lipstick and from lipstick it grew to eyeshadow and from there I just kind of grew this obsession with makeup. To be honest, makeup was really just a hobby that kind of took off. It was an insecurity that kind of just took off I was just like oh well if I go to school for it maybe I can make this a career not knowing what I was getting myself into so fast forward I decide to go to Clary Sage I had already went to a sister school and got my degree in medical assisting so why not be an alumni they made that that tour of the uh, makeup artistry class and the aesthetics and the massage therapy they just made it look so good they made it seem so welcoming that I was gonna learn so much I would be you know licensed in the state of where I am <laughs> and well you guys probably already know obviously so licensed in the state of Oklahoma um, it just everything that glitters isn't gold you know and so once I enrolled in school, I had to enroll in part-time because I worked full-time. I was a mom. I was a fiancé. Like, I had a life. And so, for 11 months, I worked full-time and went to school and being a mom and being a fiancé and being family to, you know, everybody else. And 
in that time while I was in school, I was almost, well, for about eight months, I was the only student in the school for makeup artistry. Um, it was hard. I had to do a lot of the looks on myself. It wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. Let's just say that. So within those first, you know, five months that I was by myself, I did have to take my more intricate classes first, you know, like skin and hair and, you know, like learning about chemicals and learning what not to do, you know, just the hard courses. I had to take them first. But was what was so messed up about it is the fact that my teacher couldn't even pronounce some of the big words. Like she's reading footnotes from a PowerPoint and she can't even pronounce the words. Like, ma'am, I don't even know what you're talking about, right? So then there was that, right? And so over time, like we did get like a couple of new students and some came, dropped out and it was just a big mess. And so when we finally did get more students, it still wasn't enough for us to be able to do makeup on each other. A lot of the looks we I mean, I get that you have an assignment, you have to do your research and then you have to do that. But it was just like we had no real direction in what we were doing and the assignments. It was just kind of she was winging it, which we got to be creative. We got to express ourselves in whatever way we wanted to. But it was still just it was just no real direction and just organization I would say for me like I I feel like it just wasn't organized enough for me um I did get student of the month one year I mean one year wow girl get it together one month and the only reason why I got student of the month because I was the only student in makeup artistry <laughs> So I felt like I really got it out of pity, you know, but I mean, it's good to have that on my transcript, you know, just to have that, you know, whatever. You know, it was just a lot of things that could have went wrong while I was in school at Clary Sage that did go wrong. You know, not enough teachers, no real products in the classroom, no real school supplies that we needed for our courses in the classroom. Teachers quitting. We're constantly getting a new teacher every few months. Teachers taking master instructor courses while they're teaching so that they could teach. Like it was just it. It was a lot. It was a lot, and I just feel like I didn't get the training that I needed in order to be my best self. I still feel like I am self-taught. I am a self-taught makeup artist because even in, in class, like I had to do the research. I had to figure out what materials and what products I wanted to use for my look. I had to execute that look. I had to do my face charts. Like, I I get it. That's classwork. That was my job. But when it came to any real direction and any help and any advice, when it comes to doing my assignments, our teachers were not there. You know, there were no real mock boards for, for our state board, like, I could go on and on and I feel like I would be all over the place because it was just always something. And I feel like I'm a beast when it come to, come to this. Like, I won't say like I'm the best, but like from where I started to where I am now, I am very, very proud of the growth and my skills and my creativity. And so I feel like I am not the only lady who experienced this. I feel like me telling this story was a long time coming. You know, it, it was kind of my origin story. 
you guys know that I love horror movies. I am a big, big, big horror fan. I love Chucky. Um, yeah, it's it's basically my, you know, my origin story. Like, I can relate to Dana Newman in so many ways and the whole reason why I wanted to get into makeup and why I chose to get into makeup was because it started out as an insecurity for me and then it got to the point to where I wasn't covering my insecurities. I was enhancing my beauty and that is where Chucky's gym came from whenever you think of Chucky you immediately think of two-faced attitude killer all these negative things right but what people don't realize is Chucky was just a young boy who had lost his way. He was in a group home. He was abused. It, you know, like, he had a hard life that made him who he was. He let his circumstances take over his life and control him. And that's not what I want for me. That's not what I want for anybody who look up to me. That's not what I want for any young person, whether you're a, a male or female, you know, when it comes to your self-esteem, you have to love yourself first. And it took me a really long time to just love myself first and stop looking for it, for love in other places. And like I said, just like Dana Newman, I wanted to, to change so much about myself not realizing that the beauty was there the whole time and I don't want to kill myself trying to stand up to the beauty standards and the opinions of others which is why I stand on being authentic and true to myself and blunt and standing on my opinions and standing up for myself that way, I won't become a victim like Dana Newman. You know, I I had a lot of fun doing this look, but it was also very irritating because I wanted this look to come out just like just like in the movie, you know, and. It was me picking apart, picking myself apart again. How, how after 11 years of, of, you know, being a mom, my boobs don't sit up right. So the scars weren't going to be right. I, they weren't going to be in the right place. And my face isn't, isn't, I don't know. I, my face is cute. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. But just the scar on my face. It didn't turn out how I wanted. The the the, the roughness of the look and the cleanliness of the look didn't come out how I wanted. But then I had to remember I am not Dana Newman. I am Chucky's Jam. And so this had to be a representation of me. You know, I I am my generation's Dana Newman. And so I had to realize that I can't be her. I can't make myself look like her. That was the issue. That was the problem. That she wanted to look like somebody else. That I wanted to look like somebody else. And so I had to trust the process in this look. And when I say I did that. I did that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me bring this look together. I don't even know if I'm going to get banned on it. On YouTube, I don't know if they're going to make me remove this because of, you know, the graphics. I, I don't know, but... I've put this video off for so long. This I put this look off for so long because I was afraid of telling my story. I was afraid of 
what it would look like. I was afraid of people's opinion of my work, my art, in in something I'm so passionate about. And in this journey of shadow work and, and finding myself and, and getting back to myself and, and really being true to who Chucky's Gym is, I had to sit back and say, F y'all. F y'all opinions. I'm me. I'm going to do what I want. And if I like it, I like it. And F who don't like it. And if you don't like it, that's a personal problem. I am just saying that I am so proud of this journey. I am so, so happy to shed the old me and who I thought I wanted to be and who I thought I was and just be true to myself. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And Gems, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Yes. Huh? Yes.